This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited. Welcome back. As COVID cases surge and with many making preparations for the hurricane season, those that are concerned, the concern is how the concern. The concern is how will hurricane shelters fare as the country braces itself for another active hurricane season. Love 97 News spoke with facilities registered as hurricane shelters on how preparations are going, particularly how they plan on managing around the COVID pandemic. Kale Campbell tells us more in this report. Right around the time when the COVID, um, the COVID was here in the Bahamas at an extensive level, and we did use the facility although it was like a false alarm, you know, the event never transpired, but we did have the facility in use. We had persons that came in and what we did with the Ministry of Social Service, because they basically be the persons who are front, who you're gonna be dealing with on an ongoing basis on it. You know, once we activate as a setup, social service really take the lead in terms of, of the way we process people, the way we manage people, the way we move people about the facility. And they do have their protocol in place for the for um, COVID. There were a few minor um, things that they brought to our attention to ensure that the hurricane shelter is fully operational and accommodating to those persons who may need to have use of the shelter during this time. The COVID guidelines and the health protocols by the Ministry of Health will be strictly enforced um, as it relates to social distancing and the wearing of masks and the sanitization of the facilities. We have already begun to put every um, thing in place to make sure that those guidelines are met and enforced. And as it relates to the overall preparation of the shelter, yes, we can say that we are ready. There are situations like, you know, to present itself where um, there is a need to try and fit persons in, but what happens with overcrowding, you're gonna end up with a number of other problems that are going to compromise the safety of the shelter. And so what happens is social services would be, um, they would try and find accommodations at another shelter that may um, you know, have the space to accommodate the persons. It's a decision that make in real time because you're basically trying to preserve life. So, I mean, you get the person in here, you wear the mask, um, you know, maintain the social distancing to the extent that you could, but at the same time, you're in a catch too, because you can turn the person back out there and just traversing in the environment, just trying to get from one place to the next because in their life. So in a case like that, you have to make that decision, and I don't think we'll turn them away. We'll have to accommodate them. On Tuesday, a Bahamas Air Charter flight departed from the New Providence Airport on the way to Port-au-Prince with 62 Haitian nationals on board, 46 males, 12 of them females, and four minors were in the group. Additionally, on the same day, another Bahamas Air flight carrying 10 Cuban nationals departed New Providence for Havana, Cuba. This group consisted of nine males and one female. The Immigration Department's deportation unit led both escorts with all COVID-19 protocols strictly observed as the health and welfare and safety of our officers, law enforcement counterparts, and the migrants remained the highest priority. In recent comments, Minister of Immigration Keith Bell says the government may look into ways uh, they can have those migrants processed and repatriated quickly without having to bring them to the capital. The Financial Crimes and Anti-Corruption Branch of the Royal Bahamas Police Force placed two people before the magistrate courts on Thursday on charges related to fraudulent marriage. 
one of the suspects, a staff member from the Registrar Department on Shirley Street. Appearing before Magistrate Carolyn Volk Evans in court number six was Haitian national Kenal Dorseville, who was charged with fraud by false pretense. The particulars are that on June 14, 2016, he entered into a fraudulent marriage with precious, wonderful Davis, who was not in the court at the time. He was also charged with fraud by false pretense when he tried to obtain a residential spousal permit from the Registrar Department on the same day in 2016. Dawsonville, who was represented by attorney Ian Cargo, pleaded not guilty to the charges. The prosecutor did not have any objection to bail, but informed the magistrate that Mr. Dawsonville's work permit was seized by the police. Therefore, he had no current legal status to be in the Bahamas, and as a result, does not qualify for bail, and should be processed by the Immigration Department until the matter returns to court. Meanwhile, Bahamian Adisha Adley, presumably the staff member from the Registrar's Department, was charged with abetment to commit fraud by false presents also on June 14, 2016. Ms. Adderley pleaded not guilty and was granted bail in the amount of $5,000 with one or two sureties. She has to report to the East Street South Police Station every Sunday by 7 p.m. or bail will be revoked. The case continues on July 14. And finally, it's Global Road Safety Month. This year, road safety is being recognized under the theme Streets for Life. The global message begins with safety in the school zones. But get this, if you are a female driver, you may want to listen closely and be sure that you are not guilty of uh, the alarming trend that the police are seeing from drivers traversing our streets. We hear more in this next report. It's the month of May and around the world, 193 nations that are a part of the United Nations are promoting the message of road safety under the theme, Streets for Life. In the message, it begins with safety in the school zones. On May 12th, Chief Superintendent of Police David Lockhart, officer in charge of the Road Traffic Department in the Royal Bahamas Police Force, shared some startling facts about motorists here in the Bahamas, especially female drivers. Um, last week, the traffic division run an operation uh, in a school area or just not too far from a school area and we were very surprised that we clocked person doing 90 miles an hour yes. and uh, it's sad to say um, we reported over 100 uh, persons mm -hmm. and more than One six this week th this yes. was last week Thursday mm -hmm. and more than 60 percent of those persons reported were females and that is very alarming because usually the trend that male were more aggressive drivers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but uh, the trend appeared to be switching now to females. They are more aggressive in their speed. So that is alarming uh, because they are mostly the primary person that are conveying children. Right. So that is very concerning to us. Superintendent Lockhart was a guest on the Royal Bahamas Police Force show, Cop Talk, with host Inspector Michelle Pinder. Some motorists may complain, but Superintendent Lockhart says road checks will continue in an effort to sensitize motorists of their driving habits, with the hopes it will help change the attitude of those among us who like to speed. Uh, because if you're traveling 30 miles an hour, you're traveling some 44 feet per Correct. second. Mm -hmm. That's very fast. So you can actually, in a second, you could be right on top of somebody and don't realize it. Um, what drivers have to realize is you need 1.25 seconds to process a danger and then decide what action to take. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you don't get that 1.25 seconds to be able to process and then that is why we have crashes. Even though they are not operating vehicles, Superintendent Lockhart believes road safety messages need to begin at a very early age. But the road safety needs to begin at the primary school it does. level. Mm. It does. Uh, because you would know that a lot of small kids walk to school. Mm -hmm. Their parents can't afford to take them or they have to go to work. So we need to bring the awareness uh, to the small kids so they know when to cross the road, where to cross the road, mm -hmm. and more so the drivers need to be aware of the school zones and that the speed limit. In the Asked if there needs to be stiffer penalties for drivers caught speeding, Superintendent Lockhart shared another major concern regarding a troubling trend on the streets of the Bahamas. He also reminded drivers of the new road traffic laws recently passed and enforced. One of the most concerning things for the police is that this year, most of our fatal crashes were due to hit and run accidents. And that is very concerning to the police. The law as of, I think it was the 9th of February, 
there was a new gazetting of a law for vehicular manslaughter. So the penalty now for driving and causing the death of somebody is very high. It's from 5 to 15 years of jail time. Okay. There is no more monetary fine attached to it because now it's vehicular manslaughter when it used to be killing the cause of dangerous driving mm -hmm. when you could pay a $10,000 fine and that is it. So the penalty And no jail time. And no jail time. Okay. So the penalty is very strict now. Mm -hmm. um, two weeks ago, we placed the first driver before the court for vehicular homicide. Um, we, we have a, a number of matters we are looking at now. We don't know if it'll be the vehicular manslaughter or it would be the killing of cause of dangerous driving. But the public mm -hmm. need to be aware that it's no longer, I can pay a fine and I'm home mm -hmm. because you will be sent to jail. Superintendent Lockhart reminded us all that speed kills. And that'll do it, folks, for your JCN Evening News. Once again, I'm Jorino Saunders. Thanks for joining us.